Welcome to another How It Works with Holger. Today I would like to show you how you can easily scan or decode a barcode and QR code with components from TMS software. Before looking at a concrete example where we read and decode barcodes, let's look at the options that you have to deliver the barcodes into your application. First, of course, you can use an image file. You load the image from a hard disk or you read it from a stream, which is the other option that you can use streams. The files can either be in binary or base64 format, which makes it very easy to use these controls in web applications because a lot of content on the web is encoded in base64. So no conversion on your part is needed. You can simply load the base64 string into the component. In addition to these two, you can also load images from a resource that is included in your file. Of course, this is only limited usage with regards to barcodes because barcodes have to be variable. And this scenario really only applies if you have a DLL that you download from the internet and that has multiple resources in it, for example. Otherwise, I really can't see a usage scenario for a barcode as a resource. But the coolest option to use is the camera. And this makes these components really, really useful. So you can create a mobile application or web application on a mobile device that scans barcodes while using the camera. The components use the existing camera component from TMS software that is also part of the WX pack. So if you look on the YouTube channel, you'll find videos about the camera component for the WX pack that explains to you how to use a camera with your applications. And this will make it easy to hook up this camera instance to your barcode. The ability you have with these controls using the camera is amazing because the barcode is recognized live. It's not like some other control packs where you take an image with the camera and then that image is being used. The barcode recognition is actually live. That means while you move the barcode into the camera at some point, the component will automatically send an event, I have decoded the barcode. So this gives you a truly interactive experience if you want to develop software for scanning tickets or other sources of access control. And as said, the decoding process, and I have to look a little bit more to the slides now because I can't remember all these things with the different overrides out of the top of my head. So first of all, important to know is that all these components throw an event or trigger an event as soon as a barcode has been recognized. With an image that is rather easy because the image is being loaded and then the decoding process can start right away. But when using a camera component in association with the barcode decoding, that makes sense. So as soon as a barcode is recognized, the undecoded event is triggered and first of all, a found, the Boolean property, hints if the barcode was valid because the component might think, oh, this is a barcode. And then in the end, it turns out it was just like a coincidence or a false positive. The A result string contains all the information that is included in the barcode. So if you, for example, think of a QR barcode that contains a business card, you will get the V card text as part of that string. So all the information encoded inside of a barcode is given to you using that event. Alternatively, and that is what you see here, you have asynchronous callbacks. So instead of providing an event, you can use an anonymous method as a callback. Using a synchronous callback is in particular useful because the code that is being executed after decoding is really tied in your source code to the method call. And another thing is if you have multiple types of barcodes that you want to recognize, it might be tricky to distinguish the different kinds inside of the event handler and using an asynchronous callback makes it much easier. Enough talk, let's look at an example. Here we are with an empty VCL application. The WX pack controls can be used in the VCL or FireMonkey and all other frameworks that are available in Delphi. So I could also have created a web application, but let's focus on the VCL. In order to load our barcode, and this is what the example will do, we'll load an image 
with a barcode from the disk and then we'll decode that information from that barcode and show it in a memo control. That's a simple VCL application that will get you started and will also give me the opportunity to show you all the nice features and properties of the controls. So first we need two buttons. One button to load the file and another button to decode the barcode. We'll trigger these events. We'll not trigger it automatically. And of course we'll also need an image control on the form to display the image. So let's drop a T image control and we'll anchor it so it resizes with the form automatically and our buttons will stay on the left. I'll just increase their size a little bit like so and this will be the button I'll name it button load file or load image and this will be the button decode. And of course we also need the actual component to decode the information. And if we type decode, we'll get from the TMS FNC WX pack. I almost said we because like W is um, V in German. So I always struggle a little bit with the WX. So looking at the two controls we have, we have a barcode decoder. That's the control that you use for anything but QR code. So let's look at that first. And here we go select and the controls properties you have to look at are first of all the camera property that's a very important property because this is where you link the WX camera control if I just type camera we will see the T M S F N C W X camera don't confuse it in case you use TMS web core with the T web camera that's a different control you have to stay in the confines of the WX pack. So this is a control you wanna use. And we have a separate video for that control, how to use it. And also the standard demo that comes with the TMS WX pack uses the camera control to make you more comfortable with using it. I leave it out intentionally because it is difficult for me to record my picture and then record the screen and show something on a different camera at the same time it will be too confusing. So going from here, we have the barcode. And as you see, I selected in the tool palette the web camera, and that doesn't work because you can't drop TMS web core controls on a VCL surface. You'll get an error message for that. And going from here, we also have to set the type of barcode. We do that in the barcode type property. And here you see all, almost all the barcodes that are supported to be created, or let's say a huge number of barcodes that are available to be created by the WX pack can also be decoded. Of course, the number is smaller than the number of barcodes that you can create, but I think this still covers the basic barcodes that you need today. And that's it. That's literally all you need to do. You set these two properties and then the event, as I already mentioned, on decoded is the key event because that event is triggered as soon as the decoding of a barcode has completed. But for now, let's focus on a QR code that we want to decode. So here we have the WX QR code decoder and we name it name we name it barcode barcode decoder that's the name i'm going to use and also let me change the caption so here we do load with three dots and here we do decode and let's name the image control image not image one and i think we rena renamed almost everything except form make this form main and as a caption we select that is the barcode D or QR code decoding example. Loading image files has become pretty easy because Delphi provides great user interface controls for that. We can use the file open dialog 
which is included in the Vista dialogs. No longer use the dialogs. The dialogs are there for compatibility, in my opinion, but the Vista dialogs are the ones that are used by Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11. Now, these give you a great user experience and an up-to-date user experience compared to the other controls. They work a little bit differently than before, but I'll get right through the point that make it easier for you to use these. So the file types are the key here because you no longer have to specify these strings with the bar ASCII code 134 for the people from Europe that don't have it on the keyboard. Um, you can simply specify a T file type item and that makes it really easy. You can display a display name. For example, you can say this is a PNG image or a JPEG and then the file mask is startup PNG and you can create another one. JPEG image, display name, JPEG image and the file mask is star JPEG. And then you have the two types in there and your dialogue is able to show these. Going back to the dialogue, we'll name it dialogue open. And just to say it right away, the execute method is still being used and it returns true if the user pressed OK, so you can go ahead. So nothing changed there. Also, the options are very similar to what we had before. So I'm going to say the path must exist, the file must exist, otherwise it doesn't make sense to load it. And as a title, open image with barcode is going to be our title of the dialogue. The OK button label, I'm not going to change that. I can stay with the default um, open. So that's it for the dialogue. Let's see, load, be implemented right in the event. Usually I would write a different method for that. So we could say if dialog open dot execute then begin and then just as before or since Delphi one we can use the dialog open dot file name to read the file name that was selected. So we want to load the file. So we say load file and dialog open dot file name and that I'm indeed going to use a different method for that. So in the private section, we'll say procedure dot file, file name, string, save. Of course, these things would normally go into the view model or some other um, pattern that you would like to use. Um, for these videos, I want to give you a very easy to reproduce example. So I'm going to group everything inside of the form class, which of course for bigger projects is not appropriate. So load file, what happens if we load the image? We simply assign the image to the image component. Yet again, something you usually don't do because you don't want to rely with your barcode decoding on a visual component. You want to use a variable of some sort, but I'm just going to assign it to the image component to make it very visual what is going on. So we can say image dot load from, sorry, image dot picture because we don't want to address the image control. We want to address the picture that is inside of the control. And we can say load from file. And there we can use the up file name from the dialog that has been passed to us. If you're asking yourself, do we really need this load file method? No, of course I could also have written image.picture.load from file and do it directly here. I agree with you, whatever is more suitable for a demo application. I just wanted to point out that usually I don't put everything inside of the event, but for this demo, we're good. We can keep it like this. And now we do the decoding. So the image is inside of our image control at this point as part of the picture property. And now we can use decode to decode the barcode and we want to show it as a message or memo control. I'm just going to pick a show message to keep it short. So decode. And what we need to do now is we need to use the decode method of the barcode component. So if we type bar code decoder dot 
the code and you see all the nice methods that I introduced you to in the slide section. So we have the from base 64, which allows us to decode a base 64 string that contains the actual image with the barcode. We can decode from a file specifying the file name. Guess what we'll be using here and decode from image is giving me the opportunity to decode from an image. So that is actually the one that we're going to use because we already have the image resource. And take note that this uses the TTMS FNC bitmap. That's a scary type um, that a lot of customers of mine get confused with. So simply ignore it because we have a great thing in Delphi which is called dot assign. And TMS provides a smooth transfer of the FNC bitmap type from the VCL and FireMonkey type. So don't even worry about it. You'll see, you wouldn't even know that it is a TTMS FNC bitmap if I hadn't pointed it out because the transfer is smooth. You can simply assign the picture property from the image control and that will work fine. We'll see. So in order to decode, again, I'm going to implement inside of the event. We're going to declare a bitmap, L bitmap, and it's going to be a TTMS FNC bitmap. And this bitmap is instantiated, TTMS FNC bitmap dot create. So this is a special type created by TMS that can be used on all platforms. Remember, FNC is for all platforms, not just for the VCL. And if you've ever done FireMonkey development, you know that the T bitmap class is completely different on the FireMonkey side than on the VCL, because the VCL has T bitmap and T picture, T graphics, and that doesn't exist in that form in the FireMonkey framework. So what we need to do here is we need to use the type that TMS created to make it easy to work with the same type on all the different platforms. This is one of the big advantages of using FNC. You do not have to think about these things. The framework does this for you. So using this graphics type or bitmap type makes it easy to transfer your code from the VCL to FireMonkey to the web. The type is always going to be the same. TMS is doing the work for you on the background. So now, how do you get your image that you have inside of this control in the picture property into the bitmap that we have right here? So it's easier than you think. You simply say lbitmap dot assign, and then you can define a source and the source is going to be the image control dot picture. That's what you want to assign to the bitmap and that will be fine. Also, as we create the bitmap in this method, we want to do try finally, and then make sure that the bitmap gets freed because we created in this method. So that's that. We don't need to care about the picture or the image or the bitmap that's inside of the control because the VCL takes care of that for us. So our bitmap, now our bitmap has the barcode that we loaded from disk. And how can we now decode it? Well, barcode decoder dot decode from image. That's the one we want to use. And we're only going to use the first parameter. We're not going to use the callback parameter. If we leave that nil, and this is a default parameter, is nil. So we just need to specify the bitmap. The second one would be nil automatically. So what that means is if we leave this nil, the component will automatically use the event if it is defined. Otherwise, you would never get the result. So if you use nil for the callback and don't specify an event, nothing is going to happen. It won't throw an error, but you don't read the result. Look at it like that. So in order to get the result, if you don't specify a callback, use the event. So decode from image, L bitmap. That's the image you want to use. And that's it. That's all the code you need to decode your barcode. It's really crazy if you think about it. And in order to read it, we implement the 
for the barcode decoder, we implement the on decoded event right here. And in a result, we have the result in case it was found. So we have to say if a found, then begin show message a result. So we show the we don't interpret the result, we just show what's inside of the barcode and else begin. And then we say show message invalid barcode. That's it. So that's really all the code we need to write. Let's try it. We run the application. So we will now load the image. I already realized I made a tiny little mistake, you'll see. So I created a QR code for Flix Engineering. So I open it and you see the mistake we made. The barcode is being shown, but it's not scaled properly. So let's fix that because there's nothing worse than bad user interface. So proportional, yes, and we also want it centered. That's it. Run again. Load. And now the barcode is proportionally centered, not stretched. Perfect. If I click decode, I get the content of the barcode, which is the URL where you can order my books and it's encoded inside of the barcode. So that's how easy it is to do that. Let's do it using an asynchronous callback instead. So for that, we would take the event away. So let's delete the event. So now nothing would happen. Let's check that. Of course, we get an error because I still have the Method defined. Okay, success. And now, here we go. Click decode. And nothing happens because we removed the event. But there's also no error being thrown. So all is still good, but we're not reading the result and it's really no use. And what we can do here is we can say instead of just specifying the bitmap we can also specify a callback method so one alternative is like on decoded i specify it like this and then i define a method like procedure on decoded and we need parameters what parameters do we need well that's always a little bit tricky with delphi if code completion does not work so you see we have the callback type as TTMS FNC WX custom barcode decode callback event. Well, that's a mouthful. So clicking here, decode from barcode and on the type, we get the method fingerprint if we look into the source code. So this is the method fingerprint we need in order to be compatible to this parameter. So looking at this, setting it as a com comment, you see procedure on decoded, and then you can take these parameters right here. And of course, they're, they're the same parameters that we had in the event. TMS is smart like that. So on decoded, we're simply going to implement the same thing that we had before. You can say if a found, then, and I'm going to make it a little bit shorter, show message. We're not going to show an error message. We're just going to show the result if it's successful because we know it is successful. Also, let me set the dialog open to D as my default folder. Big difference to the old controls. It was called back in the day initial folder. Now it's called default folder. And that's it. And this should compile. So load the image, QR, Flex Engineering, there is the barcode, decode, and it works. So is there even a shorter version to do this? Yes, there is. Of course, you can 
take this implementation out, you throw the method away. And what you do, you also don't give it a name. That's why the method is anonymous. And you move the declaration into the call. So here you say, this parameter is a procedure and the implementation is as follows, begin and no semicolon after this and because this is the parameter then braces. These are the braces for the method call and then a semicolon. And here you specify the code that is supposed to be executed. So here you can say again, if a found, then begin show message a result. So this is the implementation using an anonymous method because there is no method with a name. It's just a piece of code that is being executed, that is being call executed as soon as this image has been decoded and it's being called from the decode from image method. So let's run this. Load. Same thing, QR Flex Engineering, decode, and it works the same way. And this is probably my preferred solution, I gotta be honest, if I don't use a method, because I prefer it because the code that is being executed at some point in the future, that's always the big thing. You don't know when this will get called. And if that is being called, you, you immediately see that this is tied to this. So you have your code pretty much tied to it. That's just a personal preference. I do realize, of course, that um, having big procedure definitions or whatever inside of your method calls might be a little bit confusing at first. But as soon as you look into asynchronous programming, um, if you use, for example, web services, you have to call a web service and you don't know when the return from the web service will reach you. So it is rather common to use this construct. Other languages refer to it as closure. So this is something you will, in my opinion, will sooner or later get used to the more you use it. And TMS makes it really easy to um, introduce it slowly, step by step, because you can still use an event. That's the easiest way to do it. I showed you that. You can, you can use a method as the second parameter and the most complex solution, you can simply specify an anonymous method and do it like this. So I've shown you all different opportunities you have to decode barcodes. I focused on QR codes here, but this is a complete example how easy it is to decode barcodes and QR codes with a WXPEC from TMS software. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments on this very video and be sure to give us a thumbs up if you like it, because that way we know that you support us and that you would like more content like this. And as always, if you need my help on a personal one-on-one -on -one session of a Zoom, remote support of any kind, just email me, holger at flixengineering.com. I'm always there for your Delphi problems. See you soon.